Why carry a big giant heavy lens like this that costs $1,400 when you can take a little tiny lens like this and a little tiny camera like this that both take the same quality of pictures? Let's see, $1,400 or $400? Welcome back. If you have a Micro Four Thirds camera, either Panasonic, Lumix, or Olympus, then this video is for you. I'm going to feature the smallest, most lightweight, mainly vlogging lenses that you can use on your cameras because I don't like big, heavy things. The whole purpose of Micro Four Thirds is to have small, lightweight cameras. That's what I like. I don't like big, heavy things, even though I have big, heavy things, I usually end up using the little lightweight ones more. So vlogging is the big thing nowadays. I hate that word. It just sounds so clunky and I'm not really into vlogging. I'm not into holding a camera on myself. I like taking nice pictures and videos of something that's not me <laughs> out there. I want to be behind the camera, not in front of it, but that's the big thing now. So that's what this video is about. The whole idea of Micro Four Thirds is to have a small lightweight camera like this GM1. I mean, it's so small and light. If you travel a lot, this is the good format for traveling people. But what's been happening lately is the cameras are just getting bigger and bigger. Even this GX85, look how big this is compared to the original GM1 or GM5 or even the GX850, which is one of my favorite cameras. Look at the size difference. The GX85 is getting to be the same. It's actually bigger than an APS-C Sony, which is a bigger sensor. And now they're getting into like the G7. Look at the size difference there. And the GX8. Look at how monster that, look at the lens, look at the size of the camera. This is still micro four thirds. And yet it's considerably bigger than an APS-C camera. And it's bigger than my full frame Sony a7 III. What's the use of having micro four thirds if you get these big giant cameras? It just doesn't make any sense. What I want to focus on is these little lightweight lenses. They're just so much fun to use. You can take four lenses with you plus a camera in a little tiny bag and it takes up no space. So let's just get going. I'm gonna show you what the shots look like, what they cost and stuff like that. Now vlogging just means you're taking a video of yourself talking and most people seem to think that means this, which means wide angle lens, close distance, but really you could have a camera 10, 20, 30 feet away from you and you get a nice blurry background and you get a really cool look, which is what I like doing. I don't like the wide angle lenses. It distorts your face. It just makes, I don't like the way I look when I look in the wide angle lenses. But uh, anyway, so let's just get started. The first one off is the kit lens that comes with most of these little cameras. It's a tiny little lens. It's a 12 to 32 kit lens. It only costs $180. You're not gonna get any blurry background with it. I still suggest you take it with you when you travel because it's a great little backup lens. If you don't really care about blurry backgrounds, you can use this just by itself. So here it is at 32 millimeters zoomed all the way in and here it is at 12, which is, you know, the vlogging distance, which is great. This is like a really great little lens to have because it's small, it's lightweight, it's practical. This is a great little vlogging lens. If you don't care about the blurry background, it's cheap, it's small, it's, it doesn't weigh anything when you hold it on the end of your hand. And it's only 180 bucks and it's just a great little backup. You, I say always have a little kit lens with you as a backup. All right, next up we have the Lumix 15 millimeter 1.7. This is a great little lens to have. It's a Leica lens, so the quality is really, really good. And it goes down to 1.7. And I like how you can manually turn the aperture ring, which is, I love that instead of having to go into a menu and change it. 15 millimeter and micro four thirds is like the perfect vlogging lens. So here's what it looks like looking through a 15 millimeter 1.7. Yeah, it's a nice sharp lens because it's Leica. This is a Leica lens. I Leica. I Leica this a lens. -a. This is the 15 millimeter shooting at 1080 instead of 4K. Starting to get a little bit of a blurry background there. Small lens, really practical. This is probably the most practical uh, vlogging lens to use because it's arm's length and it's wide enough and a little bit of a blurry background. It's $550 and it's a great vlogging lens because it's so small. All right, moving up to 17 millimeter. So here's the big heavy 17 millimeter 1.2 that everybody loves so much. It costs $1,200 and it's big and it's heavy. And here is a little tiny $400 17 millimeter 1.8. 
Let's compare the two. So this is the big giant heavy 17 millimeter 1.2 held at arm's length. And here's the little tiny $400 17 millimeter 1.8, which costs three times less than this. It's tiny, it weighs almost nothing, much more practical for carrying around, especially if you're traveling. I know the background's a little blurrier with the big one, but this tiny little thing is so lightweight and small and practical and easy to use. I, I, I'd really consider that all instead of this. This big one is just not fun to carry around and use. So this is the difference. This is the 1.2, this is the 1.8, and this is the 1.2. And here's the 1.8. So there's the difference, you decide. Moving up next, this is the Lumix 20 millimeter 1.7. It's only $270. I think as far as closeness by hand holding, we're right at the limit of what is tolerable for hand holding a camera. It's still okay for vlogging, hand holding, if you're using a little handle underneath. But I think 20 millimeters, the cutoff point where you need to start using a tripod so you're not too close. Now I'm shooting at 1080p right now, so this is about as wide as you're gonna get. If I shoot in 4K, it's gonna crop in even closer. So this is the 20 millimeter 1.7. This is what it looks like when you hand hold it. It's getting a little close, a little too close for comfort. The background's starting to look cooler, but I'm gonna have to put this one on a tripod. So here it is on a tripod, much better. And I can move around, I don't have to hold it. And I can move as far back and close as I want. Look at the background, more out of focus. This is good. So at 20 millimeter is kind of the point where you can't hand hold it anymore and the background starts to look really cool. That's kind of like the, the the crossover point, 20 millimeters, like the magic, the magic number there. Lenses that are flat like this are called pancake lenses because they're really flat. And you can put them on. Look how low profile that is. 20 millimeters really pushing the limit for what you can do for hand holding when you hold something, even with a flexi grip or something like that. 20 millimeters really pushing it. You got it really close to your face. So that takes us up to the next one, the 25. Now we're getting into some magical looking backgrounds. This is the Olympus M Zoico 25 millimeter 1.8. $300, good price, small lens, really good low profile, really nice for small cameras. Again, like the GX850 that I'm using here. Really, look how small that is in your hand. I like that. So I think with small lenses like this, 25 millimeter and up, is where you start getting the really cool backgrounds. Okay, now we're at 25 millimeter and we're definitely too close. So now we have to switch from hand holding to tripod. That's better. So this is the 25 millimeter M Zoico 1.8 and now it's back to being a more comfortable uh, vlogging distance again. So the background looks much more out of focus. This is, so this, this is like kind of a toss up between having the camera close to you and having the background be out of focus. The more further away the camera is from you, the more back blurry you can make the background with longer lenses, but that means you have to have a tripod, which is fine with me. That's what I do all the time anyway. I don't use the handheld close stuff hardly ever. So now we're starting to get into the range that I like to use is where the camera's on a tripod and it's further back. So this is the 25 millimeter 1.8 M Zoico. So this is $300. Now here's another 25 millimeter which costs twice as much. The reason it costs twice as much is because instead of 1.8 it's 1.4. So this is the $670 1.4 25 millimeter. And this is the tiny little $300 1.8 25 millimeter. And this is the 1.4. And this is the tiny little $300 1.8. Do you see a difference? Maybe a little bit, but $300 for this one, $670 for the other one. You decide. You get a little bit more of a blurry background. It's a little bit bigger of a lens, as you can see here. All these lenses are autofocus, by the way. So that's something that I know somebody can ask. Autofocus is great. You just point and shoot, click, and you can get nice autofocus. This lens has a really cool look also. It's bigger and heavier than the Little Olympus 1.8. It's not a big, huge difference, but for some people, it's, it's worth it. So anyway, this is the 25 1.4. The next one up in size, it's a little zoom. Now remember zoom lenses, unless they're really long, they don't really have a lot of blurry background. This lens weighs almost nothing. It's like, it's super lightweight. And the reason I'm bringing this up 
is because it's so practical. It's a lightweight little lens, it's a zoom, so if you don't want to carry a bunch of different lenses, you don't want to swap lenses, you just want to like have one lens and you zoom in and out for whatever you want. 14 to 42 is really good because you can use it for wide angle, for portraits, for if you're a tourist and you don't want to change lenses and you don't really care that much about blurry backgrounds, especially when you're traveling and you know you do a lot of stuff where you want to show the background of focus, like you're trying, you don't want you want to see buildings and landscapes and you know wherever you are and location. This is a good lens to use. That's why they make this. So here it is at the 14 millimeter setting, which is actually a really good vlogging setting. This camera set at 4K right now, so it actually crops in a little bit more, and even then, it's still really good. And this is at the 42 millimeter setting. Of course, it's on a tripod way back there, but this is what it looks like. So this is the 14 to 42, really lightweight, and it only costs $130, which is really cheap. So again, there's not a lot of reason to not get it. For having something practical where, again, you don't want to swap lens. Let's say it's dusty or windy and you got all this dust and wind blowing around. You take a lens off, you don't want to get dust on your sensor. That's a good reason to have a zoom lens on it for days like that. So anyway, 14 to 42, it's really cheap, 130 bucks. Next one up. Now we get to my favorite lens. You'll notice I have this on, <laughs> here's one here, here's one here, here's one here. I like this lens so much, I got four of them. It's the Olympus M Zoico 45 millimeter 1.8. Look how small this lens is. It's a portrait lens, really small, and you get really nice blurry backgrounds with this thing. This is the 45 millimeter M Zoico Olympus 1.8. This is the lens that I use all the time. This is my favorite one. It just gives more of a look that I like. It doesn't distort my face as much. It doesn't cause that weird wide angle look. That's why I don't use the wide angles as so much. It blurs the background more and it has more compression between me and the background. So I just love this lens. It's what I use for almost everything for taking pictures of Kara and also for just taking videos of myself talking. Camera has to be further back, of course, but hey, I don't care. I mean, this is a cool look. It's worth it. I mean, why does the camera have to be real close to you all the time? I don't know. I mean, I mean, maybe some people, they want to see themselves in their screen really in focus or something, but you know, I trust the camera's focusing okay and that I'm here. But anyway, this is my favorite lens. The first uh, Micro Four Thirds lens that I ever got was this, the Lumix 42.5 1.2. This is a monster lens. Really great backgrounds. I was amazed when I looked through the camera on this thing. But look how big it is. This is the same size lens as a full frame camera would have. And it's big and it's heavy. And I'm going like, what's the use of having micro four thirds if you're gonna use lenses and cameras like this? So even though this is a great lens, this is a $1,400 lens, I never use it. I always use this little M Zoico 45 millimeter 1.8. The shots look almost identical. I know this is a 1.2 and this is a 1.8, but look at the difference. So this is the big heavy $1,400 42.5 millimeter 1.2 set at 1.2. And this is the little tiny $400 45 millimeter 1.8. And this is the big heavy 1.2. And here's the little tiny $400 45 millimeter 1.8. Is it really worth the difference between $400 and $1,400 and carrying around a big giant heavy clunky lens? I don't know, you decide. But at least you can see why I use this little tiny lens all the time and I never use the big heavy one. It's close enough for me and I like the look. It's just as good for me. I've shot so many videos with this lens. For Micro Four Thirds, which trying to keep it small and light, for me, this is my favorite lens. I don't like using the wide angles as much. I'm not into the holding the camera real close to my face type person. I do a lot of vlogs using this lens. I just put it on a tripod and put it further back. The M Zoico 45 millimeter 1.8. Look how small that is. I just love it. I love it, I love it. Now, I know some people are gonna say, what about the 75? That's my next one here. M Zoico 75 millimeter 1.8. This lens is $900. This is more than twice the cost of this one. This one is really heavy. The 75 is really heavy. The 45 is really light. The 75 is twice as big. A 75 in full frame would be like, what, 120 millimeter? I mean, it's not a practical lens to have for more. And the 45 you can use for a lot more things. This is what the 75 looks like. This is a 75 millimeter Olympus 1.8. And uh, it's a lot more telephoto. Uh, 
I don't know. I think the background is just as good in the 45. I don't need to have the camera 30 feet back just to get this shot. I think the, the 45, it's, the camera is a lot closer than this. And uh, anyway, but this is a good lens. I mean, it, it's a good telephoto type thing. It's not as practical as the 45, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like. 75 millimeter Olympus, 1.8. It's not a cheap lens either. It's uh, $900. It's almost $1,000 for this lens. And it's heavier and it's bigger, but it's good. I hardly ever use it. I use the 45, the 25, sometimes the 20, the 15, and the 17, but this is, again, the one that I use the most. I put it on a tripod and I put it, you know, eight feet away from me, six feet away from me, and it's a great lens for shooting a lot of uh, vlogs. So I know a lot of people are gonna wanna use the 17 millimeter 1.2 because it's the monster vlogging lens. This is what the 17 looks like shooting at 1080. It's just really heavy, it's big, it's expensive. And if you're gonna use something this size and this weight, might as well use APS-C because APS-C is a bigger sensor. Um, it's just, I think, if you're gonna, again, this is, look at that. As a matter of fact, look at this full frame Sony a7 III. Why use a camera this big if you can just use full frame or at least APS-C? So, I mean, this is a great camera. I love it, it's great. But again, it's all about how big of a camera and how much weight are you lugging around with you. If you're gonna carry this much weight and size, I always, I think the best, most practical format for you know that kind of size and weight is APS-C. It's not as big and heavy as a full frame. It's just got the best of everything. I love Micro Four Thirds when it gets down to small stuff like this. This is where the Micro Four Thirds really excels. So, a matter of fact, <laughs> I have two of these 42.5 lenses, the the uh, the big monster lens. I never use them, so I'm just going to give one away. You know what? <sighs> Who wants this? I'm going to give away this forty fourteen hundred dollar. <laughs> 42.5, 1.2 micro four thirds lens. This is, a, this is an awesome lens. I just never use it. So if, if you have a micro four thirds camera, email me your name and mailing address to free stuff at marcuspicks.com. I'll pick the winner in the next video. I just never use that lens. And if you if your idea is to get it just to sell it and make money, this is for people who love photography and just love it. And I'm giving you a gift of something that hopefully you will appreciate and savor for years to come. So this is that's what this channel is for, people who love photography. Um, anyway, so yeah, so let's get back to these lenses. I love Micro Four Thirds because the cameras and lenses are so small and it's portable, it's great for traveling. The quality is pretty much just as good as the APS-C. I just love it for its size and weight. So that's why I like these small lenses. So hopefully this helped. I mean, give you some choices for what lenses to, to get. And uh, I think they all have a good look. I mean, it's really, I mean, is, I think good photography isn't necessarily about the blurriest background or having the highest pixel resolution. It's, it's just, does it tell a story? Is it an interesting picture? Uh, is it lit well? <laughs> is it in focus? You know, the basic stuff like that. Uh, good pictures in photography doesn't have to have the latest bells and whistles, just, you know, like art. You know, good composition, good color, good lighting. Does it tell a story? Does it make you feel good emotionally? Um, and you can do that with the tiniest little camera that's out there. I love, like this one, this is a, look, look at this. This is a little GM5. This camera is so, it's got a viewfinder. I mean, talk about small. This is the smallest uh, Micro Four Thirds Panasonic interchangeable lens camera that you could possibly get with a viewfinder, a hot shoe so you can do flash, even off camera flash. And here is the GM1, which is the same size, just doesn't have a, a hot shoe on it. Has built-in flash and everything. Um, and lately I've been using for vlogging the GX850 for the last few years. This is a great camera to use. And again, these are all really small. And that's why Micro Four Thirds is, should be used if you're into small stuff. If not, get an APS-C camera or full frame, you know, if you're really into that tech hardware, manly, big stuff. But I like small, lightweight, portable travel things. So 
anyway, I hope this helped. I hope this inspired you. And um, that's it. So I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy photography. Enjoy life. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.